Terry here at D-Lab, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate a classic Heathkit model TT1 tube checker. This thing was built back in the early 60s, and it's still a very sought-after tube checker today. Luckily, I happen to have the original 1962 Heathkit Christmas catalog that this thing was featured in. So I will show you those ads, and I'm going to take you through the checker inside so you can see how it was built and then we'll test a 6v6 and a 12ax7 and if you're lucky maybe someday you'll own one of these classic tube checkers so here's a heath kit model tt1 mutual conductance tube tester so this is a cadillac tube tester a dynamic type so it actually loads tubes and gives you the most accurate test okay this isn't like the cheap ones that you'd go to in the dime store to see if they're good or bad, okay? This one will actually give you indications on that meter of what a good tube should be. It was featured in this 1962-3 to winter Heathkit catalog. So here she is, the actual ad in the catalog in full green Heathkit color, right? Take a look at the price, $149. In today's rate, that's like $1,200. Look how she was built. Quite a piece of art. A very rare machine. If you ever see one, snag it, especially if you're into vintage tube guitar amp work. All right, let's uh, sweep the control panel so you can see a nice close-up. This unit is extremely clean. A lot of these that you see have a cracked meter. That's because people accidentally close them with the power cord or the accessory octal cord from that TT1 little deck in the way of the meter and when you close it they get busted. That's a real bummer. So luckily this one has never met that fate. Now let's pop it open and take a look at the construction. So I popped out the chassis so you can take a look. Remember these are a kit and these are a very complicated kit. Okay, So not only did you have to be good at the mechanical construction, but she needed to be able to solder really well. And you also had to make sure that all these millions of wires didn't contact each other. You see the roll charts in good shape. Here's the original power transformer. This thing still has all the original filter caps in it. Probably be a good idea to change those to give it more longevity. And down here is a switch that they used during the initial setup and calibration. Okay, so there is a procedure in the manual for getting that set up. So for the ease of the demo, I've propped up the tube checker and I've removed the top lid. All right, so it comes stock with this little roller paper wheel in here. Okay, and it lists most of the popular tubes, but back in the day, you could also get these books that had additional tube charts. And if you're lucky enough, let me cut to this other picture, you could join the tube data subscription service. So if you take a look at this picture, you see this big monstrous machine. It was how Heathkit designers would take a tube and measure the grids and you know plate voltages and all that, and they would actually develop the test and if you're part of the subscription, you would receive updated charts for your tube checker. It was for a mere $2.50 per year. All right, so as I was referring to the tube checker initially, I called it the TT1. But when you see these advertised for sale, a lot of guys call them the TT1A. Well, actually, the A was the addition of this upper little deck up here. Pan up and show you. So this was actually the TTA 1-1 uh, adapter. And this was actually used for checking those Compactron tubes. So this was an accessory. You did not have to buy that with the standard TT1 tube checker. It adds value, but I've never used it. Very seldom would I ever run across a Compactron tube. 
But if you're looking for one of these, that will drive the price higher. So what I'm going to do is we're going to do the two most popular guitar amp tubes. Right? So the first one, if you can see it on the chart, will be a 6V6. So there he is. But the first step you do after you turn on your tube checker is you want to set the line voltage. So over here is a line test switch. You push that and you look at that arrow. It says line check. You set that needle to line up with the arrow. And that sets the power properly in the tube checker to get accurate measurements. So we're going to start our first test with this old Kenrad 6V6 tube. There's only one spot that it will plug into, so you can't get that wrong. Then you simply follow the chart, and this chart calls out these switch positions. So for example, it says plate is on position F. And there he is, he's on F. Then it shows bias, 30H. So when you go over to your bias control, you set that at 30, and then there's a low high bias switch. So in this case, it'll be at high. Filament, 6.3. Your meter for sensitivity, they have you set that at 44. Okay. Then you have the signal switch, which is right there, and that has to be at 4. Then you go to the selectors, and that's where it can get a little bit confusing until you've ran this a couple times. So it says, for the 6v6, it says 2, 7, 3, 4, 5, right? Well, that's the top row. So I got 2, 7, 3, 4, 5. Then it says dash 0610. That's these guys down here. 0, 6, 1, 0, right? So you're all set up. So at this point, you would check your leakage. So you look at the meter. You use this switch here. It says leakage, right? So there's my grid, screen plate, suppressor, heater to cathode. So if you were to see this needle deflect in any of those positions, it would tell you that you more than likely have a shorted element in the tube. And at that point, you just stop the test. There's no reason to go any further. The next step, you put this at tube test. You go over here, and there's a switch. I think I'm kind of covering it up. Anyway, there's a little rocker switch over here that says GM test. You hit that, and there is the gain of the tube. And I've got a little over a thousand, maybe 1100, 1150. And then if you look at your chart, it says that a good number for that 6v6 should be 1220. So yeah, it's an older tube. It's probably lost some gain in its life, but it is usable and has no shorts. All right, for our next test, we're going to check this old vintage GE 12AX7 tube. So the test setup will obviously be different from that 6V6. And I'm going to use the chart in this little accessory book that came with the checker. So 12AX7, our plate is at F. Okay. 15L now for the bias. So 15, low bias. 6.3 volts, 46 for the meter. We have our signal at 2, okay, which is there. Alrighty, then we come down here to the rotary select switches. This is PGK, so all the way over here. P, G, K, 77, so 70, 7, and then 3516, so 3, Five, one, six. Okay, so we're ready to test it. Let's take our tube, pop him in the socket. It should light up. And then, same deal, we'll go over here and we'll start checking for shorts. So I don't show any shorts. Okay, now we're back into tube test. So we're going to go over here. Now in this case, this, uh, this uh, tube actually has two sections, right? So you got K1, P1, G1, right? Because we're checking the first section of the tube. So go over here. There's our gain. Looks okay. So if you look at the chart, you do your first 
K1, P1, G1, then you go K2, P2, and G2. So flip those and go through, check for shorts again. No problem found. GM test. There's the other half of the 12AX7. So that is a good 12AX7 tube. That does not mean that it won't be microphonic, but it means that for shorts and gain, it looks like a good one. As a word of precaution, when you're setting up your tube checker, it's always a good idea not to have the tube plugged in to any of the sockets. That way, if you accidentally have something set in the wrong position, you don't either damage the tube or damage the tester. There you go, your guided tour of the Heathkit TT1 tube checker. If you ever are out looking for one of these, make sure that they come with the original assembly and operation manuals as well as those accessory charts. Because obviously you can't find those anywhere and you need that documentation to keep this vintage gear running. And if you keep this thing running, it's going to keep your tube amps running. We'll see you again. Mm -hmm.